CSS scroll driven animations. They are pretty cool. But how could you use them to create these little scroll indicators on the side of the page here? They're pretty neat. You can click them and they kind of morph as you scroll through the page. Pretty satisfying. Here's a broken down demo I've put together and this will hopefully show you the trick behind it. So we've got a couple of extras here as well. We have this kind of nice spotlight effect and we've got some scroll snap in here. So you can use your arrow keys to navigate and those indicators update as you'd expect. So let's hop into some code. Here's the markup. We have this track uh, element and then we have basic list with some list items in it. And then we have the track indicators. Now worth noting here, these are anchor elements with hash destinations. You probably want to change them out to buttons and drop a little bit of script in that says when you click them, scroll to a certain point. We will get to that snippet later, but for the sake of doing it just CSS, I've done it with anchor elements and yeah, we'll show that bit of code later. Cool. Now for the CSS. So we have a card width specified in a custom property, and then we have our track, which is just taking up the full page for the sake of the demo. Um, and then if we go down, 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 a bit more, we have this article piece. So we might as well touch on the spotlight piece while we're here. This trick was from the glow cards demo. If you didn't watch that one, uh, maybe go check it out. But yeah, background attachment fixed. Remember what the spotlight looks like. They kind of come in dark on the edges and they're kind of highlighted in the middle. Take background attachment fixed off. Ooh, they don't look so good, do they? But that background attachment fixed means that we can stretch that background, specific background layer even, to be relative to the viewport. And it kind of creates this nice effect as you scroll in. Kind of like that. It's nice. Um, each list item as well has the scroll snap line center and we're using scroll snap type X mandatory on the list. We may as well cover that while we're here. Right, so the indicators. They live in this container, which is display flex. Cool. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Because once we get to the animation timeline piece, this is where the magic happens. Essentially, the trick is to, as you scroll, animate the flex value of each indicator based on the um, the associated list item. Cool. So, and to prove uh, the neat trick here as well, aspect ratio. So if we change this from 7 to 1, to like 12 to 1, it's just going to fill up more of the space. Um, took it down to like 6, it's going to be a bit smaller, but we like 7. 7 seems to look quite nice, so we go with 7. But yeah, the trick is set a view timeline for each list item and creatively we've named them 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. But the important part here is the view timeline axis, which is inline. So that means we're tracking uh, the inline position of the element within its scroll port. So horizontal. Cool. And then each indicator sets an animation timeline of the um, associated view timeline. So for indicate of type 3, it's going to use animation timeline 3, and that's the view timeline that's defined for li of type 3, right? But how do they see that? How do they see that view timeline? Because you're meant to be a child to see a view timeline, not a sibling. But with timeline scope here on the track, you can hoist the view timelines up, and then other relatives can see them. So that's kind of neat. That's how you bridge that gap so people can uh, other elements can see it right now the indicator so the indicator's got its animation timeline and it's got its uh, view timeline that it's going to use cool the animation though is blink both linear and the blink animation just sets flex to free at the halfway point so if you imagine if we go back um, let's say we're looking at indicator the third one in right at this point it's flex one and as it comes in it's 50 percent it's going to be flex free and that's pushing the second one down and then as that moves out it's going to go back down to flex one and you see it scroll snap there and that made the next one free so every time there can only be one indicator that's flex free it takes up the more room than the others the added color, like opacity thing, it's just an extra little trick in there. 
just doing the same thing, 50% show, and I'm using the, uh, the pseudo element on the indicator just to fade the opacity in and out on it. So that's, that's kind of it. That is the trick to it. As you scroll, use a view timeline that's in line of the list item and tie it to the indicator via timeline scope. And as the thing hits the middle, update its flex value to make it bigger. And then you get the nice keyboard controls and stuff for free with scroll snap. And when you click one of these anchors, you can see here as I'm hovering, that it's like hash two, hash three, the browser will scroll to that. And because we have scroll behavior smooth set somewhere, scroll behavior smooth here, and a scroll padding inline, just in case, and a padding inline of the card width and 50 VW. So it's 50 VW minus the card width um, times 0 0.5, which is half of it to make sure it sits nicely. It will just scroll smoothly to that point. And that's kind of it. So if you're just going to do it with CSS, that will do the job. But if you don't have scroll driven animations, you can jump in to some green socks. So here I've got green sock and scroll trigger and we do a check and we say, if not CSS.supports animation timeline scroll, register scroll trigger, set the aspect ratio in JavaScript land, and then grab our indicators and our articles. And then for each indicator, create a tween that tweens the flex to free, uh, repeats once, yo-yo true. So that means when it repeats, it goes in the opposite direction. So it'll go up and down, if you imagine that, like, but it won't, it'll go flex in and out. <laughs> but then we tie it to scroll, we use scroll trigger to tie it to scroll. So scrub true, horizontal true, and then the trigger is the article with the same index as the indicator. And then the scroller is the list and then we say start when that thing, uh, its right side is on the right, and end when its left side is on the left. And that's that's all there is to it. If you wanted the code for the button clicks that we mentioned earlier, um, I think it's here. Yeah, we'd have these track indicator pieces, and then put a button inside. I uh, unhighlight it for you. Uh, uncomment it even. Yeah. If it's type button and you click on the indicator container and you happen to click a button, grab its index and then scroll that list item into view using smooth and inline center. Pretty cool. That's that's all there is to it. That's how you create um, scroll driven indicators. <laughs> but yeah. Let me know what you think, any questions or any requests or suggestions, let me know and Stay awesome.